Okay, I think we need to spend some significant time on this. Joe's doing a great job at holding the black sheet. Say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> A lot of people that have got into aquascape in, in Norwich yeah. as a result of coming in here. Hi everyone, George here. I'm with my friend Ray. Hello. Ray is owner of Scape Nature. That's where we are today. Look at this. Check out this beautiful yeah. moss wall behind us. Did Jill, make, my good did Jill wife. actually Yeah, make Jill did. She did. Um, it was actually just before the first lockdown last year. Yeah. In fact, I'll leave um, a, a link to, I made a video with Jill on the Moss Art process. So I'll leave right, a link yep. to that in the comment. So I'm here today. Uh, lockdown has kind of been lifted a little bit in the UK. So I've used the opportunity to come and see Ray at Scape Nature here in Norwich in England. Joe's with us as well. Hello. Uh, we're going to check out all the displays. Uh, it's been quite a lot of changes since I was last here, so some uh, significant uh, updates for you all. So excited to show you around. Let's go and take a look. Exciting. Okay, so the first display as you walk into the store, turn to your left and you see this beautiful ADA 60p, Ray? That's right, yep. Um, very, very slightly damaged one. Uh, and that's why you use a terrarium. Uh, so no water in here, obviously. Well, not obviously maybe, but you can see it is a terrarium. We've got some bonsai trees? Kind of? Kind of. They're thick as ginseng. I think people okay. that are truly into bonsai would say they're not really you know, very good bonsai, but they're actually very easy going, very easy to look after. And it was kind of, it, it was our take on a sakai, sakai uh, bonsai scene. You know, okay. little landscapes that you create with trees, so it's not just okay. about a specific tree. Almost like a diorama, but a terrarium yeah, based exactly. diorama. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's a little landscape that the trees sort of feature, and it's meant to be a little river bed with a sort of woodland grove. That's great. So what, what are these plants here in the foreground? Is this... Um... So you've got a Chorus Gramnius Pusillus. Okay, we've got a Chorus, and then you've got some Hydrocotyle by looking That's at That's right, Verticolata. Yeah. Is that Which flowering? Is in, yeah, yeah, it's all flowering away in it's there. It's beautiful. And how long has this been running? So that's been going almost a year. A little bit, I think it was probably late April, sort of May, that it was planted last year. It was just before you'd come up, actually. Yeah. And it's great because <coughs> um, bystanders or you know people walking past, they can just look in the store and they can see these beautiful displays. You must get loads of people just sort of wanting loads to come in. Loads of people, yeah, regularly and, check on it. And then with lockdown, obviously, it's a bit awkward because you, you can't really let them in until... Is it appointments only at the moment? Or? Uh, yeah, so we're actually we're reopening on Saturday for the first time. Okay. Um, it is by appointment. Because um, we kind of found that it worked really well in some ways for customers, you know, that want to come to the store, want to have some time. Yeah. We're able to just concentrate on them yeah. and they, they know they want to come. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it can be difficult just with um, you know, sort of people browsing at the same time as you're trying to sort of look after yeah. look after other customers. But you do mail order, so you can still we do, yeah. operate as a business. You know, we're really grateful to everybody that's been shopping with us over the last year online because that, that's kept us going, yeah. um, kept us really busy. Let's talk about this beautiful display. This is a Dua Paluda, Paluda 60, 60. That's right. which you set up at the same time as I set up the Paluda 30. That's right, yeah. That I have running at home right now. It's just starting. So these have been running the again. same amount of time. It's nearly six, it's got to be six months now. I think it's more than that. I think yeah. it was last September we right. did it. So okay. it's probably about eight months. Yeah. So can you just tell the viewers what this is, basically? Yeah, so I mean, you've already said it's the Paluda 60 by Dua. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've, we've done it in a pretty heavily sort of jungly style with a lot of big plants. There's lots of, um, we've got a lot of Tillandsia yeah, in there. Yeah, these kind of air plants, aren't they? Yeah. But the overall system as a whole, it's like a paludarium with a living kind of wall background, isn't it? Yeah. And it has like this uh, inbuilt filtration system. Uh, you've got an ADA substrate system as well. That's right. So and you've got the Dua jungle soil, yeah. jungle, bi jungle base. Mm -hmm. And then you've basically got the Wabikusa sort of bricks or the moss, yeah. um, the sponges that the moss fixes to. Okay. And you've got a little sort of reservoir of water that sits in the top along with a mist flow unit. Okay. And a fan that sits above the mist flow unit. Yeah. So you can sort of see that the mist is being blown through that vent. Yeah. And then when the doors are closed, it really keeps all that sort of humidity inside. 
Yeah, it's crazy. And you can see it actually forms little pools of water in the bromeliads. So you're quite expensive <coughs> though, I think everyone would... Suggest. They're a high-end system for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, they're not Pretty, inexpensive. No. Uh, you're looking at, it's kind of 1,200 pounds for the whole wow. sort of setup, plus yeah. plants and things that go with it. The light being a large part of that. Yeah. Um, but it's a lovely light. It's a similar uh, spectrum to the <coughs> solar RGB, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that sort of almost bluish green sort of yeah, tint to it. As you can really tell in the video, but it does look like that in real life. Okay, we've got a Boyle Bear 60 litre here. That's right. This has been running for a while, I guess. Yeah, so again, that, I think that was planted up at a similar sort of time. Um, so it's probably, it's at least six months that it's been going. Yeah. Again, very jungly style, lots of bromeliads, lots of tillandsia, cordyline red edge. Yeah. That sort of dual orchids. And this is, these have got to be quite low maintenance, I guess, are they? Yeah, really easy going. There's nothing that needs to be trimmed. Yeah. Um, so the fan and the, um, the misting is done automatically? That's right. So again, you've got a little reservoir, very similar principles to the Paloda. Okay. So you've got a reservoir of water that yeah. sits up in the top with a mist flow unit. Uh -huh. And whenever the mist flows on, that can we do? We can, we can actually activate yeah. that manually, can't we? A a quick here. press. That just maintains the humidity. And the lights are automatic, aren't they? 12 hours. That's right, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Lovely. And got some of the cycle. beautiful little creations here. <laughs> so that's just a little um, Japanese awesome. rice ball. So just to show people a, a bit of um, so a sense of scale here, yeah, it's actually really small. So it's smaller than my my hand, I love that. And the thing I like about it is just how the moss is basically taking over the bowl completely and starting to come up out of the bowl. Yeah. And we've got a little bit of Fetonia going yeah. on there as well. It's gorgeous. And we love a bit of moss. What moss is it? Is it spiky or um, java? I think it's a mix. Okay. An awful lot of the things like this, it's basically it's trimmings that come out of the tanks and yeah. they just get used. And then behind that you've got a... A little terrarium, sort of open topped, fluted sort of So do you need, to miss, do you need to miss these at all or are they self Yeah. Yeah. And because it's open, um, you do need to spray it. Okay. But it's really only every sort of two weeks probably that yeah. it needs to be sprayed. Okay. And they've got some, these are so cute, aren't they? Is it Little moss about? balls. Have you heard about the, they've had some issues with the moss balls in America with some freshwater mussels being attached. Yeah, I heard that they were going to stop selling them. Yeah. I don't know whether that's true or not. Yeah, I heard something. I keep going to become a bit of an endangered sort of a species. So you've been busy, Ray. Look at these lot. I have indeed. Did you do all these yourself? Yep. Oh my God. What a legend. And in fact, we've actually turned over these shelves several times. Have you? All the substrate systems similar? <coughs> yeah, very similar. And what is that consistent? So we've basically of? got um, clay hydro pebbles at the bottom. Okay. Um, so they're really good at basically, they, they'll absorb some of the water, they'll retain it, keep it sort of moist, but stop a sludge developing at yeah. the bottom. Okay. So you just basically want to get a bit of water. Is that for there, drainage? Not too you? much, yeah. So yeah. you've got, a, it's a drainage layer effectively. Okay. And then above that, You've got soil. Yeah. And it's got perlite, vermiculite in there as well. Okay. Mixed with charcoal. Okay, what does that do? Charcoal helps to keep it sort of pure. You know, okay. It absorbs sort of impurities, stops smells developing, sort of uh, outbreaks of uh, bad bacteria, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then the sand is really just decorative. It doesn't actually have a, okay. a sort of a purpose to it. Uh -huh. And then you might see one of them. Um, they've all got spring teals basically. Okay, so it kind of makes it bioactive? Yeah, so they're kind of the terrarium equivalent of shrimp. Okay. <laughs> so they'll eat um, dead, you know, decaying sort of matter. I wonder if we can see any, if we get close enough. We had some and then they breed basically within the, the soil. Yeah. So these are all relatively recently made. Might not be able to see any, but they'll be in there somewhere. Yeah, we'll spot some somewhere, I'm sure. But what it does do, which is really good, is stop um, mould development, particularly oh, okay. where we're using wood for hardscape. Yeah. You know, it's very typical that you're going to get mould going up on the wood. Okay. And they stop it. That's, in, that's really cool. So they eat the mould, basically, I guess. They do, yeah. So it's like a, um, just uh, literally a mini ecosystem. Yeah. 
Absolutely, yeah. keep it in sort of balance. So there's two different sizes here. You've got the biggest one on the back. How, how much do these go for? Um, so they're 120. 120 pounds, so about 150, dollars And we do them in sort of two, two styles, what we call ferns and fetonia, yeah. which would be that sort of style. And then you've got what we'd call, you can see them sort of better down here, but sort of bonsai. So yeah, sort of bonsai style. Yeah. Again, a little sort I of love this fetonia here, yeah, this kind of needle leaf fetonia. Yeah, really delicate, isn't it? It's beautiful. Yeah. So, so the big ones, 150? 120. 120 and the big medium size? And they're 85. Okay. And these mini ones down here? And then you've got sort of medium size, you've got large flasks that go at 80, small flasks at 45, and these ones are 19. I think they're 14 for the little uh, sort of tubes. <laughs> you might recognise some of the plants. We've actually, don't always use moss. Oh, I've seen it's like glossy. Eh? Yeah, so you've got gloss in and there. Let me get a close-up of that for the uh, plant geeks out there. There you go, you can see the glossy eh, there. A recognisable kind of teardrop shaped leaf. You've got macranthum, you've got elatine hydropiper. Oh yeah, the tiny little carpet. Some of these are just that. recently planted, so they haven't fully sort of grown in yet. That yeah. one's been going for a bit longer. So how long does it take you to make one of these? I guess you can knock them out quite quick now. You're a bit of an expert, <coughs> quite a lot of experience. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, some of them, the flasks are kind of awkward because they've got a smaller room. I like a bit of a <laughs> ship in a bottle effect. Yeah, yeah, I really like working on the bigger things. Yeah, a bit more <laughs> you know, They're just kind of easy to get into, yeah. easier to work, you know, to get the hardscape that's suitable for them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the bigger ones in some ways are actually easier. Yeah, of course. And do you ship these or do people have to come and collect? Um, so we'll send out these little ones. Yeah. You'll see they don't have any hard skip. Mm -hmm. And so you can just put a bit of bubble wrap in, stops things moving around, well packaged, it'll travel fine. Yeah. But with the larger you know, sort of pieces, particularly where we're using rock and stuff, yeah. it, you just can't send them out. Um, we did try a couple of times in the early days and unfortunately they arrived in pieces. Yeah, well you got to, I guess you got to try these things out. <laughs> yeah, so they're, unfortunately yeah. it's only for store collection. I love it, so they're, they're lit with twin stars aren't they? <laughs> it's yeah. slight overkill, it's great. <laughs> but yeah. it works really well. It does, they're, they're great, great for the colour rendition aren't they? Great for colour rendition, the plant growth is great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, overkill but it's effective. Wow, so I just have to mention the moss art again. We, we talked about this at the beginning of the video but uh, Jill makes these by hand uh, to order, so if you do want to um, get a quote or find out more information, I'll leave a link in the description of the video. But beautiful, uh, and all maintenance, pretty much maintenance free. So Zero maintenance. Check yeah. out the video I made with Jill and you'll get much more of a deeper insight into the moss art. All sort of sizes from walls to... Because you do um, office spaces and... Yeah, we've, like done a, well, we've done a couple you? of sort of offices for local businesses. Um, um, I think if it wasn't for sort of lockdown, we'd probably have done more. But um, yeah. you know, everywhere's been sort of closed and things. I think they're beautiful. And um, you made one from for me and Emma for our wedding. That's right. Present, yeah. yeah, which is proudly hanging. Which we above. got to you about five months after. We got <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, definitely a delayed gratification. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And I love this. So this is a do a. Uh, what do they call the, the make of this? So this is the Neo Glass Air. Neo Glass Air. This is one of the, the bigger ones they do. Isn't that's it? the largest in the series, so it's 30. So just a sense of scale, that's yeah. why I am. 30, 30, and then 45 in yeah. height. I love this because it's almost like a landscape representing an aquascape, which represents a landscape. Because so <laughs> when you think about Nature Aquarium, it's all about kind of, you know, essence of nature from outside, putting it in yeah. the tank. And then the aquascaping style develops. And now it looks like you've tried to copy a nature aquarium aquascape and made it a landscape. I, th I think it. that's what's happened. <laughs> um, I mean, I, it, it was funny when we opened up the store, it was really Jill that brought terrariums into it. Aquascaping yeah. was my hobby, it was why we opened up. Yeah. But when I approach terrariums and things, I approach them from an aquascape. as I like an aquascape. I yeah. can see that. And I like it, I think it's great. I think they all work really nicely yeah. together. Yeah. Um, but again, it's a twin star light on this one. So, yeah. You know, we end up using these on all sorts. You know, it's a it twin star on the So great, though, just on to that one over there the, as well. The, the plants and their best. That's great. So, um, do you miss this? You must have to miss, miss this one. Quite yeah, quite, so we, uh, we do this one pretty regularly at the minute. Yeah. And the reason being, the one thing that's in there that's really fussy is the foraged moss. 
Oh, okay. So you can see that there's foraged mosses yeah. all the way down the wood. So this is all wood that you've actually collected uh, yourself? Well, the wood's actually hornwood. Yeah, sorry, the moss on the wood. Yeah, that so that's that came from Joe's allotment. <laughs> yeah. But it really doesn't want to dry out. Yeah. And so it gets a and spray you, every kind day. Of gets, and then you gradually kind of let it adapt to being a bit drier? Or do so you that's, the, that's the plan, yeah. um, that once it's established, it won't be as fussy. Okay, let's carry on around. So here's some plants ready for sale. There's some messy yeah, equipment. Yeah, so we, the main sort of things <laughs> we stock are aquatic plants and terrarium plants, basically. Yeah. Um, so you'll find the sort of phytonia, the ferns that we use. Um, and then you'll you'll find sort of aquatic plants and semi-aquatic marginal plants. Yeah. But it's all the things that we use in the displays in here that we use at home to create things. Uh -huh. And we have little tolanzia bowls, a really easy going sort of a plant, air plant. Yeah. I think it's worth pointing out to the viewers where we actually are. So if you look in the distance now you can see Norwich Cathedral here. Is that um, right? th so that one, oh, I'm trying it's to not remember Norwich the name. Cathedral, it's it? not, that's at the other end of the it's town. Awesome. Apparently, we actually have a cathedral for every week of the year in Norwich, oh my and a pub for every uh, day. Yeah, there's a lot of pubs here, which I'm quite yeah. Pub sure for every day. day. We're, we're excited that they're. We're going to actually go again. to a pub later. Hopefully. We might do that. Yeah, yeah. exciting. I think it, you know, it's supporting local business. Yeah, it's uh, essential. <laughs> okay, uh, let's have a quick look at this little. Do a what do they call it? Neo air, neo glass. Neo glass air. I love this moss, so vibrant. What's this, bun moss? Yep. I love that. It's so pure and clean. You just want to rest your head in it. It's our favourite. We yeah. use it in just so much stuff. But yeah, it looks properly pedable sometimes. Yeah, it's it? nice. That fern just looks incredibly healthy. I guess again, it's that sort of ferns and phytonia yeah, <laughs> sort it's of style. such a lovely combination. So simple and clean, but lovely. you know, it just still gives that real natural look. Really easy going. Yeah. Um, you know, they're pretty hardy sort of plants. They all work nicely together. Excuse the reflections, but it's what it is. It's a similar concept layout, but we've got some. What's this? So that's again a ficus. Is it ficus or ficus? Ficus. Oh, or I'm not know. sure. I, I pronounce it ficus. It could be ficus. This is my skin. This bun moss. And then I think we need and to spend... And this is under the new Dua Magnet Light. Which oh, really interesting. Like. I've not actually seen these. So now. these are really new out. Okay. And it's on one of the base sort of stands. Yeah. Um, but you can easily vary the intensity of the light. Oh, okay. You do that manually. Is that a clicker button, is it? Okay. But it's actually, it's a little magnet. So that's just... Comes off. So huh. That's the light. And you can stick it to anything that's metallic, basically. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, that works really nicely. Yeah. They're always innovating, aren't they, ADA? And then that's the last of the Neo Glass airs on display. Just giving people a sneak preview of that. <laughs> <coughs> Keep watching. And this one's been going for a long time. I love time. this. This is so. I love the way the uh, floating. Really is it the Philanthus fluitans? The, yeah, that's right. The red root floater here is actually kind of growing over itself. I've never actually seen that before. No, it's really, it's getting a bit of it's like a, almost it. like a stem plant, isn't it? Which I've never seen it doing it before either, but it seems to like the ONF light. Yeah. yeah, they are good lights, aren't they? I'm trying to do some fancy, fancy cinematics with my iPhone. Yeah. And do you know the lovely thing about this? It hasn't had a clean, apart from just wiping the outside, it hasn't had a clean in months. Wow. It never gets a water change, it just gets topped up with soft water. It's amazing. So it must just be in sort of balance, there's enough sort of plants yeah. in there to... Okay, I think we need to spend some significant time on this uh, escape. This, this has been, been a real favourite on This has been channel. featured on my channel a few times. On my Instagram, it's been one of the most popular escapes that I've featured. And you, I think it was just... Re did you have a bit of a disaster last time or just before? So last summer, we lost there was a loads heat wave. Big, I'm going to get Joe to stand with the uh, black cloth again. Hang on, Joe's doing a great job at holding the black sheet. Say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. I've <laughs> uh, got epic reflections, so that's why we're doing that. Anyway, moving on quickly to this <laughs> beautiful Denelay Nanocube 30. That's it. Set up about 18 years ago, <laughs> by the look of it. Something like that. No, it's, what, was it uh, three it's, years old? It's, do you know, it's getting there. It would have been sort of, I think it was late August. Yeah. Uh, 2018. Did you set it up at home first? Or did you set it yeah. Up? yeah. Yeah, it was at home before the shop opened up. 
and then it's been it's kind of evolved. And you did Frank a video of it when it had literally just been set up. Yeah, I'll try and leave links to all these in the description. Because people, whenever we post pictures, do ask what it was like to start with, and that video shows what yeah. it was like. But I think, I mean, look, just look at that Buca Valandri. It's tiny. So you had a bit of a crash, didn't you? You lost. So there was a heat wave, and it must have got to forty degrees and. In here, 40 you know, degrees Celsius, uh, which is uh, over 100 it was, Fahrenheit. It was seriously hot. Yeah. And it just melted over the course of a few days. You can still see that down that side is basically where we lost lots of it. And I think it was the deep purple right. that mainly died off. Okay. So it's maybe just a bit more sensitive than the other yeah. varieties. It is amazing. But it's developed some lovely colours. You know, you've got yellows yeah. and sort of pinks, and it's, yeah, it's funny. So it's low tech, no CO2? No. Nope. Internal filter? Yeah, just a little Oase Biocompact 25, which is sort of tucked it's behind really, the... You can hardly see it. It's tucked just, behind the hard skin. see it on the left-hand corner there. Yeah. Um, and just shrimp. Oh, and you've got some celestial peldanios. Yeah, they, they, they tend they're, to they're hide quite out. Quite high, yeah, quite, yeah, they tend to hide short. out around the back. How's Joe getting then? Yeah, no, I'm doing good. Good. You've been working out lately? Uh, no, if anything, I've been told to not work out my shoulder. Oh, <laughs> it, yeah. Sorry about that. Let us know when you're struggling. <laughs> and then we'll just let you carry on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so shrimp, celestial pearl danios, a few species of big There's a little celestial Anubius. pearl coming to the side. Uh, oh, yeah. There's a minute. Again. So this is Anubius Petite, believe it or not, but it looks more like Anubius Mini Coin. Everything's got really small. These leaves, these leaf sizes are about five millimeters. Normally they'd be about twenty. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's um, low nutrients in combination with sort of moderate lighting. What sort of uh, fertilizers are they saying? It's Tropica. Tropica specialized yeah. for premium. Uh, the, uh, the green stuff. Yeah, green specialized, stuff specialized. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, love it. Happy fight, low really maintenance. Sorry. What make water changes? So small half, on there. half every week. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Moving over to uh, some dry goods. You do a lot of ADA stuff here now, Ray. I've noticed. Yeah. Is that working out well for you? Yeah, ADA is definitely our biggest um, sort can, of seller. You can relax now, mate. <laughs> Cheers. ADA and Dua, you know, are make up yeah. the, the majority probably of what we do. Okay. Cool. And we have another. Loads of fertilizers. So people can buy in these and do themselves, obviously, yep. if they want to make their own terrariums. Another mature boil bear. That one's been going since February, so it's only been going a couple oh, of months. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That fern's nice. What's that? That's a star. Star fern. Is it blue star? I think. I'm quite bad on some yeah. of the terrestrial ferns names. It's a little Korean rock fern in the back. Yeah, I love this. Is it a species of, um, is it pepper? Pepper, pepper? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. I love that. It seems really happy in there. Yeah. And you've got a I love the way you've got this background outside as well. <laughs> it sort of works for yeah. it, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, mate. Okay. So you're doing moss cotton t shirts as well? Yep. Awesome. Keep on scaping. Okay, Starline125. I skate this a while You ago. did. Doing right, no CO2. No CO2. Basic lighting that comes with internal filter. Although we're going to change that, we think it, it struggles a wee bit and we think it's down to the filtration. Yeah. You can see the water's water not as clear. It's a little bit turbid, isn't it? Yeah, it's not as clear as it is on the other tanks where we've no. got a proper Oase external filter. The good news is you can put a Biomaster on here and you've got the slots to put the tubing yeah. as well. That's what I've done on mine. I've got a, actually got Biomaster 600. Yeah, right, right, yeah. I've got a Biomaster 350 on my um, smaller style line. We're thinking of doing a 250 on that one. Yeah. I think this is a good example of what you can achieve with an off-the-shelf system. You know, we know that you can create, you know, you can have water that's clearer, you can have, you know, invisible equipment. But for people on a budget, I don't want to get like too complex. Yeah, it's four hundred pounds for the entire, entire setup, thing, isn't yeah. it? That's your lighting, internal yeah. filter, cabinet, everything. Yeah. So it, um, yeah, no, it definitely works for a, a budget. And on the opposite end of the scale, we've got the complete ADA system here. That's right. Which we're just like it's going to be at some point. We're playing around at the minute with the 
with the hardscape. Mm -hmm. It's actually inspired by an Iwagumi you did uh, years ago, really? which was all sand around the side. And oh, just Project Scree. Yeah, that's I'll, it. I'll overlay yeah. an image of that. That's one of my most well known scapes. Love that one. Oh, thanks, um, yeah. And I was tempted to do something sort of similar. Yeah, it's, it's just such I a beautiful. I can see the uh, similarity. That was a groundbreaking scape for me, actually, because it made me realise that you can use rocks in different ways rather than just having relying on single rocks to create yeah. the impact. You can actually lay them on top of each other. You can use them to create a sense of flow yeah. uh, and tension and all these kind of lessons I learned from that one scape. So that's it really came together. Yeah. I, I mean, I always loved it. And so I was very tempted to do something similar on that one. But um, yeah, for the ADA system, it's, it's actually really good, Ray, that you've got, they've got the ADA next to the, the kind of off the shelf Awaze. You know, this is what you can get at a high end budget. Yep. You know, obviously rimless, high end lighting, back lighting fancy cabinet, stand, you know, tool, maintenance stand, etc. Or you go for something a bit more traditional, off the shelf, um, obviously probably 20% of the, you know, a fifth of the cost yeah. of that. Yeah, that's only a um, fraction. But yeah, something for everyone, isn't it? That's a great thing about this hobby, I think. We even went for a super jet on this one, which are lovely, they weigh a ton. Yeah. They're built to last forever. No pre-filter, though. No, and they don't have a heater as well. And, can't so prime, like, and they're no self-priming, are they? No, it, def, it does have but its own But they are lovely, I've got to say. Uh, so this has been going a while. This is... Um, Another boost. <laughs> a little bit of bulbitis there for good measure. But yeah, is this Beak of Under Red? It's a mixture. So the, there's okay. a lot of it that's green velvet. And there's oh, a lot okay. of it that's red SP. Right. And you've got, in the background, you've got a lot of brownie, which has got really oh, nice yeah, sort of colour to it. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. Top down view. But it's all just sort of joined together into one big bush. Yeah. So it's hard to actually distinguish the different varieties at this stage. That's amazing. I love the colours. I love like the the shift in like the red to the green to the brown. Yeah. It's really naturalistic. I think the light tends to sort of sit there and this is closest to it. It's yeah, and that gets the colour and the more water. pack growth. Yeah. So these are the Aquascaper range. Actually, just continued which is, now. Yeah, 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 which is, is no more. Yeah, I was involved with the initial concept and, and marketing of it for the first couple of years, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's well, one of those things. It's been taken over by I think D and D now. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we're just waiting for them to sort of come back online again. Yeah. But there's ADA and Awaze. There's lots of options for lots of you know tastes and budgets. It's all good. Uh, okay, this is, this is looking bit, a bit overgrown. I say, mate, this needs a bit of a turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's to be honest, it's kind of, it's just a waiting being pulled apart and redone at this stage. Yeah. Um, but you're gonna do a full rescape then? Yeah, it's gonna be a full rescape, but just haven't had a chance. And with the shop reopening, yeah. and we're having this sort of virtual store created this afternoon. That's right. Yeah. We didn't want to take this one apart as well, right now. Yeah. So it's just been kind of. Kept. Any ideas what sort of scope you want to do yet? No. The only thing I do know is it can't be sand. Okay. Because <laughs> we've used a lot of yeah. sand in the other tanks. So I think it's going to be uh, more of a nature sort of aquarium style. Yeah. We've actually got a load of manzanita um, coming over, so I think we okay. can select some nice bits of that. But it's still another less, it's beautiful, isn't it? So you really like the chaotic nature of the stems. There's some nice plants in it, and it has looked really beautiful at times. It's yeah. just gone past that sort of stage. I think that's the, the potential issue with stem plants, is they... They have a life. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, for, it's, a, it's a window of <coughs> where it looks really good, and then for the rest of the time, unless you're maintaining it, it tends it. to look a bit messy. But, um, yeah, really lovely. All the all CO2 injected? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that definitely same with the uh, Same with the... Well, the boost tank hasn't had CO2, no CO2 in, in here probably anymore. Probably the last year. Oh wow. Okay, but you're running the light on a lower level, I guess. I think it's just such plant that plant depth yeah. or uh, mass. Okay. So, so you're running full lighting. Full lighting. Full lighting, no CO2. Wow. I think it gets to a stage. It's the same as the uh, little Dunnerley tank. I mean, yeah. it's got the ONF flat nano yeah. at full brightness, yeah. but without CO2 and no algae yeah. issues. I think you've got the, bi the plant biomass, it can deal with the light, can't I think it? that's it's it, all once it's mature enough. It's all about the balance. Can we look in here, or is it really messy? <laughs> it would be really messy. There's nothing the embarrassing truth. in here, is there? No, that's, good. that's actually a demo filter. Got a spare filter. 
Um, that's so the one that's actually running on it. And you're using the Waze Biomasters and all the tanks apart from the Superjet, yeah, I guess, right. and the internal filter, obviously. Of the C2, and that's okay. Is that in line? No, you've got in tank diffuser on this Yeah, one. so it was in line, um, and then it wasn't working that well. And then we just swapped over to that, and that seems to have been doing better. Yeah, that's the kind of bubble rate we're running. And how often do these get maintained? Weekly? Yeah. yeah. Is that Joe's job? Yeah, Joe's very much, because I've been making so much stuff, Yeah. Uh, I just really haven't had the time to do the, the maintenance on these. Yeah. So Joe's been doing a great job. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah, looks like it. This tank. Sure. Know very well. well we I planted planted this yeah, about three two years. and a half years ago. Two yeah, and a half years. Yeah. And this is, shows what you can get when you leave a tank running for the long term. Look at this Anubius. <laughs> it's insane. Wow. So I have done a few videos with Ray. So what I'll do, I'll leave. Um, I'm probably going to create a Scape Nature playlist actually, and just stick them all in the one thing, and people can look through at their own leisure. All the previous videos that we've done, they can see the development of these scapes. Yeah, It'll be quite interesting. It's changed a lot over the, yeah. over the time. You can hardly different. see the hardscape at all, can you? Yeah, it's become... Even the, but the, um, these are plants are grown as well, I, I noticed. <laughs> the palms yeah. have got, a, certainly that one's huge. Yeah, and we've got the Kessel A360WE Tuner Sun. That's right. Lighting there. You've got that on the Spectral Controller? Yeah. Yeah. 50%? Yeah, still on 50%. Yeah. But the, the, I love the shimmer that these produce. Yeah, really. They're, they're not quite as rich as producing, the, like popping the colours of the twin star, but the shimmer, you know, that I think that's the one. It's more money, isn't it? Yeah. I think there are a lot of people love it. Some people say, oh, I can't look too, at it. Too, for too, too yeah, much. It's too yeah. much for their eyes. But the and I, I do like that shimmer. I love what it does yeah. to the ceiling. Reflecting on the ceiling. Yeah, it's great. Right. We don't have the full lights on in here. It like really produces quite a yeah. magical sort of an effect from it. And this is running inline C2, I guess. Yeah, so there's, there's twin OAS A600s on it. Yeah. And there is inline CO2. Cool. We're waiting on a delivery of more plants coming. Yeah. And you've had Thankfully, things have started to get back to normal after a rough start to the year whenever we couldn't get things. Yeah, for those that don't know, we've, we've UK have recently left Europe, so it's caused some issues with importing products, basically. So it's had a bit, bit of an impact on a lot of the a lot of uh, the aquatic industry, unfortunately. Yeah, well, it hasn't been as easy. No. But, um, in good news, Ray's got loads of good hardscape. Yes, we love a bit of hardscape. As you say, we can never have too much of it. Yeah. You can, um, you, can, you should always buy at least one piece of hardscape when you visit an aquascaping store, in my opinion. Even if it's just one stone that you like the look of, gradually build up your collection, and then you always have it to hand. We always try to keep a good sort of a stock. Yeah. What, what's the most popular stuff you've got? In, uh, is I mean, Seriu. Seriu mini you know, landscape. A, yeah, black Seriu, dragon stone. Frodo uh, stone, is that popular? Yeah, Frodo. Uh, it works better whenever people can come into the store. Yeah. Um, yeah although, in saying that, in the dojo there, that is actually for a, a customer for 90p. Nice. And I don't know if you remember this rock. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's been here for a while. But it weighs a ton, and it's hard to. to the Frodo is particularly with. dense, isn't it? It's really heavy. It's like the, one of the densest stones you find in the hobby. But it's got fantastic character too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we've been to see Adam, haven't we, in, yeah. in Poland, who's like one of the main European kind of distributors of it, and he literally had seven tons in his garden. We, we did a, actually we had a, bit a of escape a off, didn't we? we a had dry escape yeah. off. Well, we had a few beers, the sun was out, and then we were relying on his lawn, basically, playing with his rocks. <laughs> okay, more words, got some scales there. People can weigh their own hardscape. Awesome. Is there, is there anything else you want to tell the viewers that we've not um, gone through yet, Ray? I think we've pretty much we've got yeah. everything. Let's give people a bit of a, like a, you can see, guys, it's just a lovely store. It's so unique. You've got a real mixture of, obviously, the outdoor terrarium stuff and then the underwater stuff with the aquascaping. Do you find there's a demographic that's kind of more um, inclined to go terrarium or aquascape? Is it more kind of established hobbyists that come in for the aquascaping, or do you get a lot of people that are inspired and...? 
Do you know, I mean, we are really pleased about the fact that we, there are a lot of people that have got into Aquascape in, in Norwich yeah. as a result of coming in here. That's great. And it, it's fantastic, you know, and they've yeah. become some of our, you know, best sort of customers and people, you know, that we're really friendly with. And yeah. It's fantastic, you know, to see them enjoying it so much. And they've That's produced right. some really great stuff. I mean, I, I know you've seen some of their, their work. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, um, it's really great. And um, I mean, people can check out our previous videos and we've done a podcast together, but for people that don't know, Ray contacted, it must have been three years ago now. Yeah, it would have been summer of 2018, that's right. Yeah, so Ray emailed me. I didn't know who he was. He's almost like a random email. Can you help me set up an aquascaping shop, <laughs> basically? <laughs> that's right. I was like, yeah, okay. And then there we are. That's it, three yeah. years later. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. I'm really pleased it's doing so well for you. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, we have people that come in that want that want something like that requires zero maintenance. And yeah. for them, it tends to be sort of moss art or you know terrariums are very yeah. low maintenance or the hanging sort of globes with Tillandsia. Yeah. And then you have people that want to be involved, you know, and have something that they sort of create and take care of, and that tends to be more sort of aquascaping and yeah. Um, yeah. That's an interesting uh, way to almost define the differences, isn't it? How whether you're into the hobby as, as purely a con consumption point of view yeah. or from a creation point of view. And I guess a lot of newcomers will come in from the consumption side yeah. and as they get hooked and they really enjoy that, they realise, oh, I can actually can, I can have something extra to add in terms of creating it. Is that, would that be fair to well, say? That, I mean, what I tell people, because sometimes people like the look of a tank and they, they want, they yeah. would like one at home but they say, does it take a lot of looking after? Yeah. You know, do, do you have to do much with it? And I always say, you have to kind of enjoy the process, the maintenance working right. with yeah. them. Yeah. You have to see it as a bit of a hobby. As part of the hobby, isn't if it? If you just leave it there, it's not going to look lovely. Yeah. You know, if you just want something that looks nice, then you're better going for something like a terrarium. Or well, a moss art, yeah. yeah. It's like that, it's, it's a bit of a life lesson, isn't it? You, you can get, get out of it what you put in as well. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, if you, um, I mean, the, the, the kind of the, at the extreme end of the spectrum, let's just zoom in a bit, here we go. You know, you've got like a 120 centimetre high energy planted aquascape, you know, you're looking at three, four grand, yeah. you know, all in, aren't you? And then like a couple of hours a week maintenance. You know, the other end of the spectrum, you've got, an, you know, you've got something like this. It's still, you know, arguably is just as beautiful, yet requires, you know, a couple of minutes, if that, a week. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I quite enjoy making terrariums and things these days. Yeah. There's an instant gratification. Yeah. But once they're made, I don't enjoy them as much as an aquascape. Yeah, because well, there's I'm no not as invested in well, this. There's not as much it's going on, on, is there, in it? It's the, the rate of growth is really much. slow. Yeah. Okay. And then there are things that sort of cross that line. I mean, I really enjoy that little tank over there. Yeah. And it is always changing. You know, there is stuff, uh, you know, things start to bloom, things start to. Just I can just, it's really uh -huh. weird, but I, I don't know if I'm being weird here, but I can just imagine like tiny little insects flying around, <laughs> like little birds. Uh, you know, we get people saying hobbits and things as well. They yeah. expect a hobbit to appear or a fairy. I suppose you're not putting any little Lego figures in there. Or well, anything. Jill would if I gave her the chance. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, well, I think we'll uh, close it off there. Oh, just to say, there will be an event coming up in the future, a book signing event. Uh, That's right. Very much in the planning stages. So we can't uh, yeah, we'll, right we'll work that out today. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Quite a long one, but uh, worth it, I think. Absolutely, yeah, yeah no, we're so excited to have George back with us. Oh, such so. beautiful displays, mate. The store's looking amazing. Thank you. Um, You've got someone coming in later to... That's right. Do you want so, to tell everyone about that? Yeah, so it's, it's basically, it's the creation of a virtual store, but a properly virtual store. 4K imaging of the whole place that you can actually go through. If you've got a VR headset, you can put it on and oh, literally wow. go through the store, awesome. see everything close up, see it in detail. Um, there are a lot of people that don't live nearby that always yeah, love yeah. to visit. We thought this was a good way like of a, Literally a 3D virtual visit of your shop. See every detail, all the, detail, all the, exactly. all the products, all the scapes. You'll be able to see all the scapes up close. You'll be able to see them all in 4K sort of imagery as they are today. Wow, that's amazing. So so how, how can people that? see that then? Uh, I'll find out later today. <laughs> we'll be oh, able we'll, to do an we'll Instagram publish a link. post. Yeah. It'll be linked to our uh, website. So okay. at our website, there'll be a link there. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll know more once they make it. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hosting me again. Thanks to Jay as well. There we are. Wave, 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 wave,
Uh, where can people find Joe? I'm going to give Joe a shout out. You can find Joe stuff. here at Skip Nature. Right. <laughs> uh, but Joe, you've got Instagram, haven't you? Yeah, just uh, the Joeologist. The Joe, I'll, put, I'll leave a link for you, mate. Oh, he's thanks, got the Joe. cutest hedgehog. You've got to see Hector. Oh, he's beautiful. Show us your hedgehog. Not, that's not a euphemism. Uh, I don't know how well that picture's going to show up. But... There he is. Oh, oh cute is he? How cute is Hector? Hit <laughs> a thumbs up for Hector. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you take care, guys. Keep on skating. Cheerio. <laughs> you can see him in the corner. Yeah. He's just peeking he's trying, to he's trying to hide. There he is. Hi, Jay. Wave Hi. to the camp. There we go. Do you want an IAPLC t shirt? Me. It'd be a bit chilly, wouldn't it? What do you think, guys? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> just Jay, <laughs>